It's Christmas time, and in this season, many things call out to the heart of each and every one of us. A number of us will hear the call to load up the kids and the luggage, pile in the presents, and hit the highway in order to spend the holiday with those that we love most. All of us will hear the unrelenting calls from the thousands of television commercials and newspaper ads that will beckon us to stores and shops in order to find that perfect, perfect present. There will be calls to office Christmas parties, calls to children's school programs, and even calls to church choir Christmas musicals. All of these are part of a season that celebrates the God who has been calling out to his people. And at the heart of this story is a nation and a people that were longing for and calling out to their God.
Among those longing for the arrival of the Savior was a young virgin in Nazareth named Mary. On a night like no other, the angel Gabriel came to her with a pronouncement of great blessing. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Beginning that night and for many nights to come, Mary would quietly consider the fact that the God she had so long cried out to in heaven was at that moment alive within her own body.
I've seen sin-hardened men melted, derelicts transformed, and lights of hope put back into the eyes of a hopeless child. At the name of Jesus, hatred and bitterness turned to love and forgiveness. Arguments ceased. I've heard a mother softly breathe his name at the bedside of a child delirious from fever, and I've watched that little body grow quiet and the fevered brow cool. I've sat beside a dying saint, her body racked with pain, who in those final fleeting seconds summoned her last ounce of ebbing strength to whisper her sweetest name, Jesus. Emperors have tried to destroy it. Philosophers have tried to stamp it out. Tyrants have tried to wash it from the face of the earth with the very blood of those who claimed it. Yet still it stands. And there shall be the finding day when every voice that has ever uttered a sound, every voice of Adam's race, shall rise in one great mighty chorus to proclaim the name of Jesus. For in that day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So you see, it was not mere chance that caused the angels one night long ago to say to the virgin maiden, his name shall be called Jesus. 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 You know, there really is something about that name. see so clearly the trustworthiness of our God. Every promise, every prophecy was perfectly fulfilled. We peer in closer to the scene and are filled with a confidence that we can trust the word of God always. We rest assured that nothing compares to his promises. Finally, our eyes fall upon the face of the one who has just come from heaven the one whose ears have heard the music of angelic choirs and now hear only the rustling of a few barnyard animals. The one whose hand had held a scepter of power and is now clutching a piece of broken straw. We look into the face of the one who is the visible image of invisible God and our voices are silenced. And yet our hearts cry out, praise be to God for his indescribable gift. Oh, baby. 
times when our worship is joyous celebration, like how we imagined that of the shepherds that night. Another call to worship was also extended to wise men from the east. They, like the shepherds, were led to come and bow before the baby king and to rejoice in the goodness of God. Other times it will be more like Mary and Joseph as they bowed in moments of solitude beside the rough wooden cradle that held heaven's holy child. In the silence of the night, they softly, reverently, prayerfully whispered his name. worship of God is always in response to who he has revealed himself to be in the events surrounding this most amazing and wonderful night in all of history what are the attributes of God that we see we see his wisdom 
the very act of incarnation is beyond our ability to even fathom. And yet, he displayed not only his wisdom in conceiving it, but also his great power in bringing it into being. We see God's great love, such love for a fallen, rebellious creation that he was willing to become one of us in order to die on our behalf. We see his sovereignty over seemingly random events in the lives of his people. We see his faithfulness to his promises, his goodness, his mercy, his grace in initiating toward us with his best when we were at our worst. All of this stirs us as we look upon him in the manger and see him for who he really is. Like those at the manger that moment, we come to this moment with all of our own uncertainties and questions about why life is as it is. We bring relationships that are difficult, dreams that are frustrated, hopes that seem to be flickering in the winds of these uncertain days. We look for a time when all will be made right. To hearts that are lost, Jesus speaks, I am the way. To lives of confusion, he says, I am the truth. To a world that is dying, he calls out, I am the life. He may not give us answers or explanations, but he has given us himself. And we respond, Lord, I have you. That is enough. I will trust you. I will worship you.
Father, this Christmas season, may you be worshipped and adored. May we find time to quietly reflect upon your attributes, like air. May we celebrate you with joy, like the shepherds. May we live faithful lives in obedience that honor you as Joseph did. May we bow before you like the wise men did and bring you gifts, gifts of praise, gifts of glory, and gifts of ourselves. And Father, as we leave here, may our worship continue. May we bring you honor as the shepherds did upon leaving the manger by telling the good news about who you are and what you've done for us. May our lives be a song that proclaims glory to God in the highest, a Savior has come.